Now let's look at the atoms and its unique arrangement of, of the electrons. Electrons uh, play a very important part in the properties of the atoms. Electrons are present firstly around the nucleus and they're always present uh, or they choose to be present in a pair. So for example, um, if, if, uh, if we draw an atom of hydrogen, um, it has only one proton, no neutrons, and the electron that is outside is also one. So it has one electron. Now since they usually are present in a pair, so this electron is almost, uh, this electron uh, shell or the orbit is, is considered to be vacant. And, and because it's vacant, um, other electrons can come and occupy that shell. And when they occupy that shell, they have uh, three different scenarios. They can either donate an electron, they can either accept an electron, or they can share electrons. And we'll go over each of these uh, very quickly and briefly right now. Um, certain elements, certain other um, arrangements, for example, in oxygen, if you look over here, oxygen has two electrons in the center, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outside. There is a unique number for each uh, shell that it can usually have. And uh, though I, I'm assuming a lot of you haven't done chemistry, but let me just tell you the first shell can hold eight, the second can hold eight and eight. So if you can remember the pattern two, eight, eight, um, the first shell, for example, hydrogen would need to fill in the, the one electron to complete the first shell. However, oxygen has the number eight written in front of, uh, if you go and look on the periodic table, you will find it's got a number eight written on the top. This eight represents that there are eight um, electrons. And if I look at the configuration over here, two electrons can go in the first shell and the next six can go in the second shell. So this is how they're arranged. Let's look at nitrogen, for example. Nitrogen has seven, electro seven electrons on the top. So th that means that it can have two electrons on the first shell and five electrons in the, se in the second shell. So the vacancy for nitrogen is three. How however, the vacancy for oxygen is only two. It can hold two more electrons. So when there are uh, vacant spaces present in the shells, uh, the shells can somehow either accept or share electrons. Usually, um, if you have more than four electrons in a shell, they will usually accept or share. However, if I look at, a, if, if I look at an arrangement um, of sodium in which uh, the number is 11, so it has two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and one in the outside shell. Because it's, um, it's got only one electron in the outside shell, um, it's less than four, so sodium will then donate its uh, electron to form a compound. So uh, more of this you will you will um, learn if you ever took a chemistry class. I don't want to make this into a very prolonged chemistry class, but um, this gives you a sense of how electron ar arranged in different uh, orbits or different shells. Now, um, atoms in general are always neutral. Um, that's because it has, as I said, mentioned before, it has the same number of uh, protons and uh, electrons. For example, if we, let's look at the arrangement in sodium. You got two cells, uh, two electrons in the middle. The second shell has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is that two, eight. And the last shell has one. However, Chlorine, if you look on the periodic table, has a number 17 written on the top. So it would have two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, that is 10 electrons, and seven in the outside shell. So what is happening is the number of protons and electrons are equal, so there is no ch net, there is no charge on the atom, and that's why it is neutral. However, um, because the outside shell is vacant, it has some vacancy in this case for sodium it can hold almost seven or in this case it can hold almost one electron um, atoms then decide whether to gain or lose electron 
and to briefly uh, tell you the electron that um, is less than four in number will usually be lost because it's uh, more economical um, or feasible due to the energy need for that atom so if sodium was to let's uh, lose that one electron it has lost that one electron what would happen to its uh, balance uh, it will still have 11 protons but now it has 10 electrons so the net charge is positive one it has one more positive charge however chlorine because it has a space of one more electron it can gain that one electron and the net charge difference would be 17 protons and 18 electrons a charge difference of negative one now these charged particles that are just formed are called as ions so ions are charged particles and they will be formed after the atom has gained or lost electrons now once the atom has gained or lost electrons it then unites to form um, a, a bond and and there are two kinds of bonds there are bonds that are called as uh, covalent bonds and there are bonds that are called as ionic bonds and we will discuss both of them later um, but after the two atoms have combined what they now form is a is a molecule molecules are always going to be composed of two or more elements and they are also uh, just to make it a point over here molecules are very specific in the number of um, atoms for example a molecule of water will be h2o however air that we breathe in has a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen gas but this would be a mixture because they're intermingled with no ratio however if you have a ratio of two is to one then that makes it water another compound that has hydrogen and oxygen is uh, hydrogen peroxide and the ratio is one is to one over here so the difference in uh, between a compound and a mixture is mixtures are random arrangement of intermingling of substances but they have no uh, bonding in them compounds are two or more elements with a unique bond so let's look at the different kinds of bonds that, uh, that are present in biological system um, the first kind is called as the ionic bond then there is the covalent bond and the hydrogen bond um, these are the three main biological uh, molecules let's um, first understand what is an ionic bond uh, an ionic bond is a bond that is uh, due to a strong association between a positive ion and a negative ion um, a couple of slides back I showed you how the sodium ion and the chloride ion was was uh, formed uh, because they're oppositely charged particles they can now have a, a mutual attraction uh, which will link these ions together in a lattice and one of the examples of um, an ionic bond is something that you're familiar with that is NaCl which is the table salt the name of this salt is uh, sodium chloride so this is an example of an ionic bond um, covalent bond on the other hand are bonds uh, that is formed by sharing of electrons very important to remember uh, they are not bit by uh, they are not there's no electrostatic attraction over here they're actually shared electrons I'm going to highlight over here you can see how these two atoms are sharing an orbital region where the, or, the where the orbit is overlapping and the electrons that you see in the center are being shared from on both uh, atoms of both kind the first one is an example of hydrogen atom the second one is an example of oxygen and the last one is an example of water molecules so in the first example you see it's hydrogen and hydrogen similar atoms oxygen and oxygen similar atoms and the last example is water which is uh, two different elements now when you have uh, when you have um, similar atoms that are being that are sharing electrons then these are called as nonpolar covalent bond because the atoms are shared equally however when you have 
sharing between atoms uh, that are two different size particles, then that results in an unequal sharing in which one atom is slightly stronger and it pulls that shared electron towards its, um, its own uh, pole. For example, if I was to put down this hydrogen atom over here, the orbit would actually be distorted in this form in an oxygen. So the oxygen is pulling its electron more towards the central nucleus and the, uh, uh, and the hydrogen is elliptically bonded. I call this as like a tug of war. And when this happens, um, there is a slight variation of the charges. Uh, the electron pair is pulled more closer to the oxygen atom as compared to the hydrogen. Why? Because you can see the distance between the oxygen and the electron is less and this is a is a greater distance this results in a in an unequal distribution of charge where the oxygen is now considered to be a partially negatively charged particle and the hydrogen is partially positive so this is an unequal distribution resulting um, because of the shared uh, unequal sharing of the electrons that are shared between the two atoms so coming back Covalent bonds are of two kinds. You have the nonpolar covalent bond, and the other kind are the polar covalent bond. Now let's look at the last kind of bonds, which are the hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are are uh, are, are a very weak attraction that results due to the polar covalent bond. The polar covalent bond that we just saw between water results in an un unequal distribution of charge. If you recall, I said oxygen was negatively charged, slightly partially negative charge, and hydrogen is partially positive charge. This hydrogen can then have a weak attraction, which is called as a hydrogen bond, with a second molecule that is partially negative. So this is a very, very weak attraction. Um, the strength is almost 5% of that of a covalent bond. Uh, they're not chemically bonded there is no shared electron there is no uh, ionic charges that are being um, uh, that are being um, attracted like the ionic bonds so these third kinds of bonds are called as the covalent bonds um, they are not uh, truly chemical bonds they're very weak in nature but um, collectively these bonds give a very stable structure to the molecule and uh, in biological systems we will talk about these hydrogen bonds a lot let's look at the first kind of molecule that has hydrogen bond and that is the water molecule water molecule as you're familiar with you can pour water you've seen films of water you've seen spiders trailing on water water has some unique properties for living organisms uh, water molecules are firstly polar and because of this polarity uh, water molecules can attract other substances and they are they, and these substances that are dissolved in water are called as a hydrophilic uh, philic means attractive they're water loving however hydrophobic is a term which means water repelling for example oil would be a water a hydrophobic substance because oil and water do not mix um, water then creates this unique lattice that is shown over here because of this unique lattice uh, water is able to form a film and you can um, have a boat uh, float in water you can have spiders crawling on water and because of this lattice structure also when water freezes um, it creates this lattice structure in the ice which uh, expands the density of, uh, actually ex expands the volume of water and it lowers the density. So water is very important for living organisms as some of you already may be aware of. And water gives uh, many properties um, that help living um, organisms to grow. For example, let's look at this tree over here. Um, the tree is uh, pulling water from the roots and that is due to capillary action you know when you stick in a, a piece of paper in water what happens it draws the water up 
So that's a capillary action. Um, water can resist temperature changes. For example, it takes a lot of energy to heat water by one degree. So it, during very hot days, um, the temperature of the water will be very cool and that makes life possible within oceans and rivers. Um, cohesion is the attraction between one water molecule to the other and because of that water is able to flow. Um, water also dissolves many polar and ionic substances. Ionic substances are for example sodium chloride and uh, I'm going to write down sodium chloride is ionic substance and a polar example of a polar substance would be uh, glucose. Glucose is a polar substance because a polar substance is that which will have an OH group somewhere in its structure which will then help uh, to form hydrogen bonds with water and water will be able to dissolve. Now let's look at this unique structure over here which is the structure of the, of the ice. What happens is when water um, is frozen or when temperature drops um, usually um, most substances will contract and the molecules will get closer. However, uh, the water will eventually uh, crystallize and it will form a unique pattern which is in the ice uh, lattice and this instead of decreasing the volume expands and you may have noticed that if you take a water bottle and you throw it in the freezer um, during summer days um, instead of uh, if you fill the bottle all the way up you know you've distorted the shape of the plastic container that's because it expands in volume when it expands in volume the density is then lower and because of that ice is able to float uh, on the top of, uh, of, of, of an ocean and uh, the, the ocean is not uh, freezing from the bottom up if it was freezing from bottom up there would be no life on the bottom of the ocean because it floats on the top it freezes from the top down um, there is abundance life on the bottom of the ocean and it also creates uh, a thermal layer for these uh, organisms okay now let's look at a little bit more chemistry here um, a lot of uh, biological substances uh, they change their properties based on the number of uh, hydrogen ion that are present in its uh, uh, that it's present in its uh, solution and the number of uh, the amount of hydrogen ion will indicate whether the substance is acidic or basic uh, 7 is a neutral pH pH me stands for partial hydrogen ion concentration so if the if there is a lot of hydrogen ion concentration uh, then a negative log is taken of this partial hydrogen ion concentration and which will uh, lower the pH I'm really trying to get away from the chemistry and I don't want to get everybody all worked up pH is usually defined as negative log of hydrogen ion concentration this is for only for those of you who have had chemistry already if you haven't had chemistry just skip all about this equation just remember that 7 is the neutral pH um, anything that is below 7 is very acidic and substances that have a pH of high of above 7 are very uh, alkaline are also called as bases so know, know your ends on the pH table as which one is acid and which one is a base you can see over here pH um, zero is battery acid which is really bad and then gastric juices are pretty uh, high in hydrochloric acid that's why they have a low pH we have acid rain lemon juice cola very acidic substances on the other hand we have something like drain opener or the oven cleaner and the bleach um, these are all the household ammonia these are all alkaline substances uh, baking soda is slightly alkaline too um, you can see milk um, is slightly um, slightly acidic so very slightly but it's got a little slightly acidic um, texture to it pure water is neutral um, living organisms react very differently at different acids and bases we will learn later and acids and bases uh, extreme ends can also distort certain macromolecules or certain molecules of that are present in living cells 
Okay, uh, we're almost at the very end of this chemistry section. Um, there is something called as salts. Um, when we say salts, we're not just talking about sodium chloride. We're talking about a reaction in which an acid reacts with a base. An acid, for example, over here, um, which is hydrochloric acid, is reacting with a base that is sodium hydro hydroxide. And you always have water as the main one product. And the other substance that is formed is called as the salt of these two different atoms over here. So uh, this reaction is also called as a neutralization reaction, which means that you can counter effect uh, the effect of an acid by adding a little bit of base, so it neutralizes that. Uh, this neutralization is very, very important for living cells, especially to maintain homeostasis, which means to, that uh, to, uh, to resist the, the change in the pH. Uh, the pH change is usually narrow that, that um, the cells can resist. The cells resist this pH change because they have what are called as buffers. Buffers are two different kinds of compounds. Um, that can resist, it's a mixture of an acid base uh, mixture of all different kinds and they have this um, uh, capacity of either uh, giving off hydrogen ions or accepting hydrogen ions and in this process they can either uh, counter effect the effect of acidosis or alkaloisis which means that uh, it can neutralize certain environment within the cell. So uh, this concludes our um, section on the chemistry. Uh, now there are some animations that I've left in, the ch in this week's model. Make sure you do uh, watch those animations and don't forget to do your quiz, weekly quiz.